Hello folks, this is an old problem, uh, very tough, conceptually very strong and uh, uh, it is something that distinguishes a very good student from a, a normal one. So what uh, it is belongs to is the 2010, May, June, paper 2, 3 and the question number is 3. It says that a cyclist is moving up a slope that has a constant gradient. So the slope has a constant gradient here. The cyclist takes 8.0 second to climb the slope, yes, given. The variation with time t of the speed v of the cyclist as shown in figure 3.1. So it means that uh, as it uh, climbs the slope, the velocity here is uh, somewhat uh, uh, 6 meter per second. And it goes on decreasing till it reaches about uh, 3 meter per second here. Per second here. So use figure 3.1 to determine the total distance moved up the slope. So we have to use the graph, this VT graph, to find the distance traveled up the slope. So as you know that, uh, in such case, the distance is given by the area covered by the graph. So for that purpose, let me divide this into two type of uh, figures. So from 4 to 6 seconds, so from 4 to 6 seconds, uh, let me say it is a trapezium. It's a trapezium. So the area of this trapezium will be given by, the second area this is, so area 2 is equal to, equal to 1 by 2 into the perpendicular uh, distance. So it is uh, 8 minus 4 is uh, 4 into, I have got uh, this thing, so this is uh, 5, uh, so let's say it is a 5, uh, 5 minus, so this is a 3, so it will be 2, 2, uh, it's equal to, uh, uh, so let's say this is a 4, mm, 5, it is plus actually, not minus plus, so it is 8, uh, two, 2 to the 4 is a 16, so this is 16 meters. And the next area is from here to here, so for that, since this is curved, I can take it as, a, so I can draw a line somewhat uh, midway like this. So I can like this, cross it over here and say that it reaches here, a straight line somewhere here. So it will be uh, A1 is equal to 1 by 2 into this probable distance is uh, 4. Then it is uh, from here to here it is uh, let us say 5, 5.2, 5.4. So it is uh, uh, 5.4 plus, 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 plus it is 6. So it's equal to, this is 2. This is uh, uh, 11.24, 2 into 4, so it's equal to uh, 22.8. So we have A is equal to A1 plus A2 equal to 22.8 plus 16. So it will be equal to, uh, two, four, eight, two, mm, yeah, so this is, this is uh, 38.8 meters. So distance is equal to 38.8 meters so it should be approximately somewhat like this because uh, since the graph is not uniform uh, we cannot uh, predict the uh, <coughs> the, uh, the perfect value so then 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 in next question we have the bicycle and cyclist have a combined mass of 92 kilos 92 kilos the high, vertical height through which the cyclist moves is 1.3 meters so for the moment of the bicycle bicycle and cyclist between 2 equal to 1 and 8 seconds we have to Tell the change in Ke. So, delta Ke should be equal to, uh, so Ke in the beginning, initial, initial minus uh, Ke final. So, that's equal to 1 by 2 into, mass is 92 into, the initial velocity is, velocity is 6. So, it is 6 square. So, it is 6 square minus, the final is, final is, final is, <coughs> This is 3 here, so that's why it is 3 square. So when I do the calculations, it will give me, give me, give me. So 0 0.5 into 92 into bracket uh, 6 square minus 3 square bracket close equal to, so it is 1, 2, 4, 0 joules. 1, 2, 4, 0 joules. So change equal to 1, 2, 4, 0 joules. So next question says, calculate the change in gravitational potential energy. So it will be equal to delta PE is equal to the change of vertical height is given like this. So that's why it's equal to mg into delta H. So that's equal to 92 into 9.81 into delta H is 1.3 meters. So it comes to be equal to 1170 joules. So it is 1170 joules. The cyclist pedals continuously show that the initial power de delivered to the cycle is 75 watts. 
So we calculate the useful work done by the cyclist of the slope. So the work done by the cyclist is W done by cyclist is equal to the power given into 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 time. That's equal to power given by him is 75 watt into the time is 8 seconds. So from 0 to 8 seconds, 8 seconds it becomes 600. 75 uh, 2 is 50, 3, uh, 4 is 300. So it is 600 joules. So this is 600 joules. Now in the next question, next question. Some energy is uh, used in overcoming frictional forces, of course, that is an integral part of the motion. So use your answers in B. In B to show that the total energy converted in overcoming frictional forces is approximately 670 joules. So we have to find the work required to overcome frictional forces. So one thing that we have to remember is that, is that uh, <clears throat> there are, there has been two inputs to the system. One input is the, is the change of Ke. So the cycle, uh, so what happened was, the cycle had some Ke here, some Ke here, the Ke decreased here. So that's why that delta Ke has been used for some other purpose. So energy that is used is delta Ke put in the system. Another energy put in the system is the energy given by the cyclist, which is this one. So this is also put in the system. So this is uh, work done by cyclist. Cyclist. The output from these two things is this. One of them is the increase in Pe. So when he applies force like this, the height gradually increases. So that means the increases. So this is the output. So delta Pe is the output of the system. And next is the remaining work. The remaining work is uh, the work done against friction. So because some energy is used, some work is done by the cyclist on the system, this gives increase of Pe like this and plus the remaining is used to overcome friction. So that's why therefore W friction is equal to is equal to delta Ke plus W cyclist plus delta P E which will be equal to delta K E is equal to as we have done it is 1 to 4 0 joules 1 to 4 0 joules plus uh, the work done against uh, done by the cyclist during pedaling is 600 joules minus the change of P E is given here 1170 joules so it is 1170 joules and the value will be so this is uh, 1840 minus 1170 and that is equal to 0, 7 and then 6. So it is approximately, which says approximately, but we got the exact value 670 joules. Now, determine the average ma magnitude of the frictional forces. So this, the work done against friction is equal to, is equal to force of friction into the distance. And the distance covered is equal to, so or it gives us 670 is equal to, force of friction is to be found out into the distance was, 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 was 38.8.8. So this gives us the frictional force is equal to 670 divided 38.8. And that will be, will be, will be equal to, equal to 17.2, 17.2 Newton. So it is. 17.2 newtons now the last question so this why the magnitude of the total resistive force uh, would not be constant it's because resistive force means that the friction uh, present on the surface and also the uh, resistance given by the air and one thing about that that the resistive force resistive force force due to air due to air depends on velocity depends on velocity velocity so since velocity changes since velocity changes velocity changes changes it changes and this changes this then changes this changes 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 the overall the overall resistive force resistive force so this is the complete solution to this classic and standard problem.